Okay, the next topic we are going to cover is Grails deployment. So we are going to see, well, we have actually run uh, Grails application using Grails run app and uh, we are going to see what happens when you run that particular command and we are going to see how we can create a war file and uh, we are going to also see how we can deploy Grails application over the cloud and uh, lastly continuous integration for Grails apps uh, I'm gonna actually talk about just three topics the first three topics today the continuous integration for Grails apps will be covered later on so Grails commands for running Grails app again we have used we have used Grails run app many times uh, so this is actually for running a Grails application uh, during development phase so embedded Tomcat server is automatically launched. One nice thing about Grails run app is that whatever change you make on the controller for example will be picked up right away and uh, all you have to do is save the change and then refresh the browser. So it will pick up any changes to the application files. Uh, because of that the automatic uh, change detection there is some overhead involved so obviously this is not recommended for production deployment. Uh, instead, you might use Grails Prod Run App, and uh, it removes the per request overhead, uh, lets you run uh, and lets you actually fine tune how how frequently frequently uh, the regular check uh, the uh, uh, takes place. Meaning, uh, it you can actually configure uh, disable auto recompile or recompile frequency options, uh, the uh, so that you have some control in terms of the uh, overhead involved. Okay, next, uh, creating and deploying a war file. So when you are ready to deploy your application over a production server, uh, it, that, you know, at that point you want to create a war file. Uh, you can, you know, there are two commands uh, that you can use. One is a Grails run or. Uh, it's basically running like a Grails run app, but uh, uh, you are actually running with the wall file and uh, if you're actually running with a wall file then uh, that automatic uh, change detection is not going to be enabled okay so hot reloading is disabled so that uh, you know basically it has a better performance uh, another command you can use is a great war so this is the one that you can use to create a war file and uh, then you can uh, deploy this war file into any uh, server container a uh, production server such as a Tomcat or Glassfish, WebSphere, WebLogic um, uh, those kind of servers uh, it is also possible to control uh, what libraries are included in the war file uh, as a default uh, it will actually include all the libraries required by the Grails application plus any libraries containing the plugin live directories but you can certainly customize in terms of which files you want to include as part of the WAR file and then you can deploy the WAR file into any uh, production server so uh, most of the uh, server container, uh, most of the, uh, the server has an uh, automatic uh, deployment uh, directory where you can just dump the file, dump the uh, WAR file, and then it will be uh, uh, it will be deployed. So in the case of Tomcat, uh, it does have a web apps directory, and uh, for Glassfish, it has auto deploy uh, the uh, directory. Alright, so let's do our exercise one. So exercise one is basically creating a WAR file. Okay, so first we are going to create our new Grails application. So here uh, we're going to create the deploy uh, dash app. Uh, make sure you're actually creating an application with a name with a dash instead of underscore because uh, later on when we do Heroku, uh, the cloud uh, deployment, Heroku doesn't allow you to have uh, underscore as part of your name. Okay of your project. So here I'm using dash deploy app. So I have created deploy app already and I've changed the uh, uh, I have created and changed the domain class and uh, I have created the controller class and uh, and then we do dynamic scaffolding. So everything is done. So we here we are going to actually create a wall file. So here we're going to create the uh, wall file using Grails war. So let's go to uh, let's go to the uh, terminal window so ok 
Okay, so now we don't have any wall file at this point. Okay, so we are going to say grills were, and then it will create a uh, wall file. It will create a wall file on the target directory. Okay, building a wall file. And you should create the wall file on the target directory. So if I say their target wall file, we should actually see deploy app uh, 01 the wall file. Oh, what happened? Okay, so if you actually receive this error condition, uh, the um, build error, uh, the migration does not exist. Uh, yeah, I think it's a bug in the uh, Grails command when it creates a wall file. Uh, so either you have uh, you have to create the migration directory on the Grails app, or you can uh, remove the migration plugin from the uh, plugin section of the uh, build config.file. So here I'm going to actually create the migration directory. Uh, on the Grails app. So new folder and migrations. Okay, So I have created the uh, migration directory here and uh, now let's actually try to run the command again. Okay, so building wall file and hopefully this time you should create a wall file on the target directory. Okay, so you know we can actually say, let's try to find wall file. Okay, so now it's created on the target directory. All right, now we are going to deploy this uh, wall file into Tomcat. So I have my Tomcat installed on the servers Tomcat uh, 7.0.34. So I'm going to copy this deploy app uh, 01.wall file into the web apps directory of Tomcat. So I'm going to just copy this file into Tomcat directory. So I have it already there. So I'm going to just say all. Okay, it's copied. And uh, if I go to Tomcat web apps directory, so I'm going to actually go to that directory and make sure uh, I have that WAP file present. So now I have uh, deploy app 01 WAP file. Okay, as expected. All right, now let's start the Tomcat. So here I'm going to go to bin directory of Tomcat and I'll say startup. So that will start the Tomcat. Okay, Tomcat is being started. And you can see it's deploying deploy app uh, WAR file. Okay. And uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to actually go to uh, access the application. Let's see if we can access the application by clicking localhost 8080 and deploy app 01. Okay, so let's actually click this guy. Let's see what's happening on the server. Okay, nothing. Okay. And it's supposed to be just standard, uh, the uh, Grails application. Okay, so we can uh, create a student. Okay, so that works. So we were able to deploy the WAR file into Tomcat, and uh, then we were able to uh, perform uh, some CRUD operation. <coughs> Uh, now we can actually um, uh, verify the deployment from the Tomcat application manager as well. So if we actually click uh, uh, localhost 8080, uh, then we should actually see this screen. And uh, then we can actually take a look at the server status, and uh, we'll check the uh, list of the list of the application, and we should be able to see a deploy app right here. Okay, so let's see whether we can do that. Okay, server status. 
Okay, so by the way, the username and uh, password is supposed to be Tomcat, Tomcat as a default. So let's click this guy. Okay, so we can take a look at a list of the applications. And uh, we certainly should see uh, Deploy App01. And we can at this point stop the application, reload the application, undeploy the application. And uh, we can also set the uh, session uh, timeout. All right, so that is, uh, that is the uh, exercise one. Okay, so we just have done this. Now let's move on to exercise two, actually the next topic. Uh, deploying Grails application over the cloud. So there are several options that you can use in terms of uh, Grails application, uh, the uh, uh, cloud hosting provider. So the most popular one is Cloud Foundry from VMware. It does actually have a uh, micro cloud foundry that you can run on your local machine uh, for your uh, local testing. Uh, I believe that is free but uh, actual cloud foundry you have to actually pay for it. There is no free option. Uh, App Engine from Google and the Cloud Bees from Cloud Bees and FOG and Heroku. All right, so let's actually try to see how we can uh, deploy your Grails application to Cloud Foundry. Most of the uh, this hosting provider provide, well, actually, there are some plugins that you can use. So here you can install the uh, Cloud Foundry plugin. And uh, then, obviously, you have to have a Cloud Foundry account. And uh, then you have to actually set your uh, Cloud Foundry credentials to your config.groovy file. And uh, then you can configure the plugin. Uh, with the uh, the name, for example, of the application. All right, here we're going to actually do just Heroku because uh, Heroku is something a bit more simple as well. So here the steps are sign up for Heroku, install Heroku Toolbar, which is the command line tool that you can use. So Heroku, you don't have to actually install any configuration. You, have, you don't have to change your Grails application, so that's actually a nice thing about Heroku. Uh, you don't have to install plugin or anything like that. Okay, so just a regular Grails application, you can deploy Heroku using their uh, command line tools. And uh, you have to actually have your application in JIT, uh, in Git, uh, and then finally you can deploy the application to Heroku. All right, so let's do exercise two. Okay, so let's do exercise two. Uh, this is for deploying Grails application we built to Heroku. First, you want to sign up to Heroku, so you go to Heroku sign up page, and uh, since I have already signed up, uh, I'm not going to sign up here. So you go to this website, and you provide your email address, and then you're going to receive confirmation uh, link, and uh, then if you click the link and take a few steps, then you should be uh, signed up. Okay. So once you signed up, you can actually go to Heroku website. Okay, so I'm going to actually go to the next uh, tab here. Uh, you go to Heroku.com and uh, then you're going to log in and you provide your email address and your password and log in. At this point, I don't have any app deployed, so it says you don't have any apps. Uh, so now we are ready to deploy the application. Okay, so let's go to the documentation again. Now, the next thing you have to do is you have to install Heroku Tool Belt. So instead of installing, instead of actually installing plugin, uh, Heroku allows you to actually use Heroku uh, command line tools uh, that you can get from this Heroku Tool Belt. So you go to Heroku Toolbelt website, uh, click this link, and you're going to this uh, uh, Heroku Toolbelt uh, web page where you can download a Heroku Toolbelt. Uh, so I don't, I downloaded uh, Windows version already for my system. It's basically a set of uh, the uh, command line tools that we are going to use in a few minutes. Uh, the only thing that you need to uh, check is uh, Heroku client. And once you have installed it, and uh, then you might in fact have Heroku uh, the uh, the uh, tool belt uh, 
into your path environment variable, then you should be able to run Heroku command any place. So if I say Heroku, and it will give me a set of uh, the uh, the commands that I can use. Okay, so it verifies that Heroku has been installed correctly. Now the next thing you can try with the Heroku command Heroku command is to see whether there are any apps that have been deployed to Heroku. So you can say Heroku apps. At this point, there should be none. Um, so Heroku apps is basically verifying uh, the the apps that you have deployed up to this point. Okay, so as expected, uh, I get this message, you have no apps. Now we are ready to uh, deploy our deploy app to Heroku. Now Heroku requires you to have your application on Git. Uh, so we have to initialize our application uh, with Git, meaning you, know, you, you set up your code, uh, the version control system with Git. So we are going to, on the deploy app, we are going to Git init basically creating uh, the uh, dot .git file, dot .git file, okay, and then you can actually run Grails integrate uh, dash that's git. Uh, so Grails provides integrate with uh, command, uh, and then you specify the uh, the tool or framework or library. Uh, basically, it lets create some of the files that are relevant to the particular toolkit. In this case, it's going to just create the uh, git ignore file, okay. So we are going to just run this command. Okay, and uh, then we are going to stage all our files. Uh, so we're going to say git add dot. So it's going to prepare all our files to be checked in. Okay, now we're going to commit our first uh, commit. So we're going to say git commit uh, and message is initial commit. Git commit minus m and initial commit. Okay, so we are committing our uh, the uh, files to Git. Okay, so we have done that. Now we are going to deploy our application. Uh, you want to make sure that you log in to Heroku so that you are authenticated to Heroku. Heroku login. Okay, you provide your email address. and password. Okay, so authentication has been successful. Now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, create our application to Heroku. So basically we are creating a remote repository to Heroku. So we're going to use Heroku create deploy app and uh, uh, you know, add your name here so that you know the, uh, the deploy app could be used. The name deploy app could be used by, by other students. So just to make sure that there is no conflict on Heroku, uh, we are going to actually use uh, the uh, the. I'm, I just added the name uh, dash sanction in my case. So add your name over there. Okay. So Heroku create deploy app uh, sanction. So this is going to be the name of the application uh, that you can uh, the uh, you can access. So later on, you can access your application with this link. Okay. So if there are multiple people using the same name, then you are not going to be allowed to use name. So just to make sure uh, there is no conflict in terms of name, uh, just add your name at the end. Okay. So it's deployed. Okay. Now what we have to do is uh, we have to. We have to, uh, so let's actually check whether remote repository has been created by using G command, G remote minus V, and now we have Heroku is um, one of the uh, repository. All right, so uh, we are now ready to push our application, push our code to, uh, to Heroku. So you're going to use git push Heroku master, so you're basically uh, pushing your master branch to Heroku Remote Repository. Okay, so git push Heroku Remote Repository, and this is your branch master. So it might take a few uh, minutes. 
So as you can see, it's actually, you know, the Heroku detected it's a Rails application and it's not installing OpenJDK 1.6 and it's installing Rails 2.2.3 and uh, then it does a lot more so it's loading it and it's downloading it so after the after all this is done uh, the application should be deployed and you can access the application So we can uh, verify uh, deploy has been deploy app actually in my case deploy app sanction has been deployed uh, by saying Heroku apps at the end. And we can access this application. You can access this application, uh, then we'll access the application and manage the application. Okay, so packaging Rails application and uh, building a WAR file. Okay, I think it's almost done and launching it. Okay, so it's deployed. So now you can say Heroku apps and uh, you should be able to see your application deployed. Okay, so right here. All right, now we can access this application using the link that you have received in the beginning. So that is going to be deploy app dash sanction Heroku app uh, com. So I'm going to just copy this command and uh, I'm going to access in different tab here so is is deployed correctly then it's going to be just a simple crawled application through which we can uh, uh, create a student Okay, here you go. So let's actually create the a uh, couple of students. So here, I'm gonna use my name here, age eleven, create, and we we'll create another student. And okay, so it verifies uh, the application is correctly deployed and uh, I could actually access the application using herokuapps.com at herokuapps.com alright so that's what we just have done now we can actually manage the application so we can actually go to uh, Heroku website we can just log in okay now I have already logged in and that it automatically goes to apps uh, the uh, uh, the page so I can see my deploy app sanction has been deployed and actually you can take a look at the resources being used and the activity that you have done so far and the access and then you can actually have a settings and if you click the settings and uh, you can find out the name information and uh, repository and domains error pages and all those things okay and uh, you can actually at this point delete the application so I'm gonna click uh, delete the application and I say uh, you have to actually specify the name of the application so this is just to make sure from Heroku standpoint that you know what you're doing so I'm going to say deploy app and uh, name of the application is sanction so I delete the application and there should be no more application deployed so here again if I go to Heroku apps and I should not see my application deployed alright so that is the end of uh, the uh, Heroku exercise 2 uh, deploying your uh, Grails application to Heroku the exercise 2 alright thank you